Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. I'm Aisha, your host. It's that special time of year. It's Eid. Why is this day a celebration for Muslims? What important event in Islamic history does this event commemorate? Let's sit down and talk to Dr. Shabir Ali to learn more about Eid. Welcome to the show, Dr. Shabir. Pleasure to be on. So we're in the time of Eid. Um, so what does this Eid celebrate? Well, th this Eid celebrates uh, the sacrifice that was, was done by Abraham, um, Ibrahim alayhi salam. According to the book of Genesis, God commanded Abraham, take your son, your only son Isaac, and uh, offer him as a burnt offering. Uh, in the Quranic story, the son is not named, but uh, Muslim uh, commentators on the Quran, putting piece and piece together of the Quranic uh, narrative from various passages of the Quran, arrive at the view that uh, this son must have been Ishmael, uh, because, uh, and, and, they, and they see some support uh, for this uh, from the me mention in the Bible that uh, Ishmael was born first, and then uh, Isaac uh, second. So when God is telling Abraham to sacrifice your, your son and your only son, the only one who has ever been an only son was the son Ishmael uh, before his brother was born and now Abraham would have two sons. Um, in any case, the, the uh, Quranic narrative shows that uh, Abraham saw in a vision that he was sacrificing his son. And, um, and then he said to the boy, this is what I see. Well, what, what do you see about this? So what's your opinion? And the boy said, uh, Oh, my father, do whatever you're commanded to do, uh, and you will find me, God willing, to be one of those who are patient. Uh, so that means that they both were willing to go through with this, and the Quran says, "Falamma aslama," when the two of them submitted. Uh, so the, Abraham got ready to sacrifice the boy, but then God called out to him. The Quran says, "Wa nadaina wa ya Ibrahim." He called out to him, "O oh Abraham, uh, Dr. Ru'ya, you have fulfilled the vision." And thus do we regard uh, the, the righteous people. And God saved the boy by providing an animal to be sacrificed uh, instead. So, sorry, go ahead. It is in response to that, that uh, or in commemoration of that great sacrifice that Abraham was willing to offer, that Muslims continue to offer the sacrifice on, a, on an annual basis. And this is what this uh, Eid is about. It marks that great sacrifice and we ourselves perform a sacrifice on that day. And how do we, so our sacrifice, what does that entail? So we sacrifice an animal and then, and then you know, how does that work? Yes, yeah, so if it's a small animal like a sheep or a goat, then um, one suffices for one family according to some interpreters. Some interpreters think that you need one for every person who can afford, every, every adult person who can afford to buy the animal to be sacrificed. Uh, so it's either one per person or one per household. And uh, if it's a larger animal, several households can join together. So you can, the, the one larger animal like a cow could uh, have seven shares and seven persons can participate in that. The animal is sacrificed. Of, obviously for those who eat meat, uh, the animals have to be killed. Um, you know, we buy our meat in a sanitized way. We go to the local grocers and we pick up our meat already parceled. Uh, but uh, for those who, in the rural areas, uh, slaughtering the animals for food is a living reality. Um, and there are also principles around how you slaughter, right? So that it's not, it, it's in a respectful way to the animal. Yes, Muslims are instructed in our tradition to be as humane as possible, uh, given the circumstances, uh, to make sure the animal is well fed, given something to drink, treated in an honorable and dignified manner, and uh, led to the slaughter, not in the presence of others who are already slaughtered, but uh, um, to not, not cause them unnecessary fright or uh, psychological um, uh, problems. And uh, even the blade, you do not sharpen the blade in their presence. Uh, and uh, you do make sure that your blade is sharp so that um, a, a swift cut um, does the trick so as to spare the animal as much harm as uh, possible. And uh, uh, all of this shows the, the humaneness. And then uh, we, we do this saying the name of God, um, in the name of God, to uh, remind ourselves that we do not have right over the animal, uh, and we do not have right to take life, but uh, it is only by the permission of God that we can slaughter this animal uh, for food. So normally the animal would be slaughtered for food anyhow, uh, but, but now, uh, as a commemoration of the great sacrifice, uh, the animal is sacrificed in a more symbolic manner 
uh, to represent the fact that uh, God could have commanded us to offer a sacrifice like Abraham was willing to offer, uh, but uh, God does not demand that of us. And on the other hand, God gives us the animal that we are to sacrifice, uh, but it is a test for us. Are we willing to give up something for God? Now, what do we give up here? Um, in, in, uh, in, in the rural setting in, in which somebody might have been rearing an animal for food, well, and normally they would have slaughtered the animal and, and ate from its meat anyway. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they're not really giving up that much. Uh, and in a, in a city setting, um, or in the urban setting where uh, someone is well-to-do and they normally would have bought their meats uh, from the local grocers, and now this is another way of obtaining their, their meat. Uh, so they're not really sacrificing uh, that much. Mm -hmm. uh, it is only the, the inconvenience of having to spend this money at this particular time uh, that we might classify uh, as, as a sacrifice, and it's of course something that we do out of the love of God. We're willing to give up our money, and we're willing to give up this whole thing for God. But whereas in some previous uh, religions, uh, the animal had to be burnt as a burnt offering uh, to God, we are commanded in the Quran to eat from the meat and also to share it with uh, those who are poor and needy and destitute. So in this way, the part that we give away in charity, this is the more significant part. Uh, that can obviously be classified as a sacrifice because it's a giving of your wealth in the form of this meat uh, to those who are in need of it. So you go, you sacrifice, keep some for yourself, and then also contribute and give it yes, to Yes, you can society. give it to friends, you can give it to relatives, and uh, most uh, clearly, uh, we need to give at least uh, some of it to those who are poor and uh, needy uh, because that, that shows the spirit of this uh, uh, celebration. We want to not only have a good time ourselves, but we want to make sure that every element in society uh, has uh, the opportunity to rejoice and to celebrate as well. So how do we keep these principles and teachings alive? Because this is now, it is a time of Eid, but now up until the next Eid, the next significant moment for Muslims will be Ramadan again. So how do we keep these teachings alive uh, for another whole year? Yeah, well, the two things here. One is the sacrifice itself, and the Quran says, <laughs> You are not going to achieve piety until you spend out of that which you, you love. Um, so uh, you, you need to spend to, for the sacrifice to, you know, even though you love your wealth, you're giving it for the sake of God. So that spirit of sacrifice has to remain with you throughout the, the year, to giving charity and, and giving up of your wealth for the sake of God. The, the second aspect of it is more profound in that uh, our whole life actually belongs to, to God. And uh, the Quran says that Abraham uh, repeated this prayer, in the salati wa uh, certainly my, my prayer, my sacrifice, my living and my dying uh, are for God, the Lord of the worlds. And that's the Muslim attitude. And that attitude should uh, be reflected uh, throughout our lives and throughout the year. It should certainly last until the next uh, Eid. How could it be that you know, to, and on the day of Eid we have all of this clear motivation towards serving God? And uh, soon after Eid, we turn away from God. We are neglectful and forgetful of God's commandments and teachings. Uh, we turn into a life of displeasing God. It doesn't really add up. So we, we need to continue thinking that, yes, our whole life belongs to God. Uh, we, we, we are willing to give our lives for God. Um, but, but it's not that we have to die for God. It's that we have to live for God. Our whole life and existence should be for the sake of goodness, serving God, by serving humankind, by doing good in society, by being kind to our neighbors, be performing a random act of kindness to a stranger. Uh, all of this is what is entailed in uh, the aftermath of this great sacrifice. I think very helpful lessons for us to take away. Thank you very much, Dr. Shapir. You're welcome. Hey YouTube, we hope you benefited from this video. If you liked it, or if you didn't, let us know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more, check out some of our other videos. And don't forget to subscribe so you can get new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday.